from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the following is provided by the West Virginia Department of Education and West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hey! Hey everyone, it's Education Station, the show where we invite teachers from all across West Virginia to submit videos of themselves teaching their favorite lessons. In today's episode, we've got a crazy story about a dragon, a science lesson from the sea, and a classic Dr. Seuss book. Well, hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Alex Milanese, and we're kicking off today's episode with a fun read-aloud story from Mrs. Milanese. She's going to read a book called How to Catch a Dragon. Let's check it out. Hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Milanese, and today I'm going to be reading you a story. I found this story on an app called Epic. Epic is a free app that you can download onto a phone, tablet, or iPad, and there are tons of stories to choose from. I chose a really cool one for us today, so let's check it out. This book is called How to Catch a Dragon. It's written by Adam Wallace and illustrated by Andy Elkerton. Mom's cooking in the kitchen and Grandma's standing near. We're getting ready for New Year's, my favorite day all year. I think we might be missing something, I hear my mother say. A dragon would bring forth wealth and health and fortune. A dragon, what? No way. Every year, my friends and I help decorate the streets. We hang feichun and red lanterns every couple of feet. But this new year, we're on the watch to pick up any trail. Oh, wait, is that... I thought I saw... It is a red dragon's tail. See it up there in the corner? This dragon can control the water. He's cooler than we thought. We'll have to be much smarter to get the dragon caught. We won't use tacos for this dragon. We'll try noodles and sticky rice. The problem is he loved them so. He came back to eat them twice. I thought that since our dragon ate, he'd be ready for a nap. But even Cozy Dragon Inn couldn't cut it as a trap. We hope to catch our dragon now with a thundering beat. We might as well have caught the wind, but we won't admit defeat. We cannot lose this dragon now, not with this massive bait. A dragon can't resist some gold. We'll catch him. Just you wait. On any other day, I'd love to catch money from the sky. But today, it means our trap fell through. I just, I need just one more try. This final trap has to work. It's our greatest chance. The thing that dragons love the most, the mighty dragon dance. Our dragon dance is going great. I'm having so much fun. But where's our dragon? We've got to catch him before the day is done. Oh man, we made a giant mess and no dragon to be seen. That means no good health or fortune. I guess we'd better clean. I'm sorry, Mom. I tried my best to make you proud this year. Then she pulls me in a hug. I love this dragon best right here. Watching fireworks with Mom and Grandma next to me, 
I feel so lucky standing here with my loving family. Better luck next year. The end. Thanks, Mrs. Milanese. All right, quick question before our next segment. Do you know what the largest mammal on Earth is? Well, the answer is a blue whale. They can actually stretch out over 80 feet. Well, to learn more about whales, let's go visit Miss Sinisi. Today, the video is on whales. We're going to look at whales because whales have a lot of things in common with humans, right? They are mammals like we are. And there are some things that require, you have to meet requirements in order to be considered a mammal. But let's just look at what whales have in common with humans. They are very social animals, right? They are air breathing mammals. And in order to be considered a mammal, you have to give birth to live young, right? So they could give birth to live young. They feed their babies with their own milk just like humans do, and they teach their young life skills. So let's look at how they feed. We have two categories of whales. We're gonna look at one would be baleen whales, and the other are toothed whales. So well, how, we'll look first at how the baleen whales feed. They extract their prey from seawater as it flows through um, those baleen plates using their tongues and their throat muscles. So instead of teeth, they have big plates that are in their mouth and they kind of get that water and as the water flows through, it catches some kind of the prey that they would need to eat. They are called filter feeders, like they're filtering out the water. Um, they eat mainly shrimp-like krill and fish, and it's um, the, the baleen and their, uh, their plates instead of their teeth is made out of a protein called keratin. That's the same protein that makes up your fingernails and your hair. So it's a pretty strong protein, and that's what they use to, uh, instead of teeth, they have those baleen plates. Humpback and blue whales are gulpers, right? They open their mouths wide and they gulp enormous mouths of seawater and catch their prey that way. We have gray whales and they would swim on their sides to the bottom of the ocean floor and suck up that mud and that gunk and the sand that's on the ocean floor and the water and then they can filter all that through um, that sludge and get the things that they want to eat. So these are both types of, or these three are types of baleen whales and they are filter feeders. The second category are toothed whales. They have teeth, right? All of these have teeth. Um, these we, add, we can also add in dolphins and porpoises to this category because they have teeth as well. The number of teeth, the size of the teeth, and the position of the teeth in the mouth will vary from species to species. Um, they hunt mainly fish, squid, and octopi, right? We talked about when we looked at fungus. When you remove the U.S., fungus is one, you add an I, it's several. Same thing with octopus. If you have one octopus, you put the U.S. If you have more than one, you drop it and add the I. So more than one octopus or octopi. And they use what's called echolocation. You might have heard about this in bats, but most people didn't know about this in whales. And how they do this, they're going to target their prey. They send out these high frequency clicks with their, you might have um, heard videos, click, 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 click. And those go out into the water and they bounce off of the prey and come back to the whale, right? So for their echoes, they can bounce back from different objects and then they can tell where they are. That's the same thing with a bat. A bat is also a mammal. They use those high pitches to send out those frequencies of sound and then when they come back, they know how far away um, and where their prey is located. Um, they use teeth to grab a hold onto on their prey before swallowing them and they can also use them for tearing and breaking up prey just like humans do with your teeth. How many species of whales are there? There are currently about 90 recognized species of whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Collectively, that means all together, they're no, known as cetaceans or just simply whales. You can use either one of those words mean the same thing. Those are broadly, those cetaceans are broadly divided into two groups. We just looked at those. Depending on whether they have teeth, those are called odontocete. Odon means tooth, right? or baleen mysticetes. So those are our two categories. Baleen whales are sometimes called great whales, and you might have heard about that, great whales. There are about 15 species of great whales, and the rest of them, the 77 species of whales, have teeth. Here are some whale facts. Just like we had fungi facts, we have whale facts. The largest brain on Earth belongs to the sperm whale. 
that brain is five times more volume than a human brain has, and it, that brain weighs almost 20 pounds. Our brain weighs two to three pounds. So that's six times heavier, that would be 10 times heavier if it weighed you know, two pounds. But it's really heavy, and it's dense, and it's large. They have these huge heads. Sperm whales have huge heads, not only to fill their, you know, fit their brain because their brain is so big, but the cavity there that's around their brain is filled with this yellowish fine oil called spermacele, right? Sperm for sperm whale. And that's what um, whale people that poach whales are looking for. They want to sell that oil. That oil they can use as lamp fuel. Um, so that's very a uh, hot commodity. Humpback whales, they don't eat for most of the year. They're kind of like bears are here. They live off their fat stores for five and a half to seven and a half months each year. So they may only feed once and gain all this fat in their body, and then they can just swim around and live off of that fat. All tooth whales have a mass of tissue in their heads which focuses on the whale calls for echolocation. So it's not necessarily a brain, but it would just be a mass of neurons in their head that specializes, makes them specialize in that echolocation that we talked about. Um, there used to be about 225,000 Antarctic blue whales and people poached them, they said they, they exploited them, right? We're talking about that, that oil in their head that they, people needed. So now there are less than 3,000. That Antarctic blue whale is the largest animal on the entire planet. Killer whales aren't exactly whales. They are what are called orcas. You might have heard there's a movie a long time ago called Orca. Um, that's the largest species of dolphin. So they call them killer whales, but technically they're dolphins or orcas. All whales have a dorsal fin. Dorsal means back. So on the back of the whale, there's a fin. And what it does is it helps to them to keep their balance while they swim and while they dive. So they all have dorsal fins. And then humpback whales have been known for decades for their musical abilities. Um, whales travel together and they can make certain sounds that other whales recognize. You always hear about dolphins also talking, speaking back and forth, but those are musical abilities found in whales. Thanks, Ms. Sinisi. Now, for our final segment today, we have another read aloud, and this time it's from Mr. Johnson. He's going to share a classic story from Dr. Seuss. Let's check it out. The title of this book is Horton Hatches the Egg, and was written by Theodore Seuss Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss. He also did the illustrations as well. Sighed Maisie, a lazy bird, hatching an egg. I'm tired and I'm bored and I've kinks in my leg from sitting, just sitting here day after day. It's work, how I hate it. I'd much rather play. I'd take a vacation, fly off for a rest if I could find someone to stay on my nest. If I could find someone, I'd fly away free. Then Horton the elephant passed by her tree. Hello, called the lazy bird, 
smiling her best. You've nothing to do, and I do need a rest. Would you like to sit on the egg in my nest? The elephant laughed. Why, of all silly things, I haven't feathers, and I haven't wings. Me on your egg? Why, that doesn't make sense. Your egg is so small, small, ma'am, and I'm so immense. Tut, tut, answered Maisie. I know you're not small, but I'm sure you can do it. No trouble at all. Just sit on it softly. You're gentle and kind. Come be a good fellow. I know you won't mind. I can't, said the elephant. Please, begged the bird. I won't be gone long, sir. I give you my word. I'll hurry right back. Why, I'll never be missed. Very well, said the elephant since you insist. You want a vacation? Go fly off and take it. I'll sit on your egg and I'll try not to break it. I'll stay and be faithful. I mean what I say. Toodaloo! sang out Maisie and fluttered away. Hmm, the first thing to do murmured Horton. Let's see. The first thing to do is to prop up this tree and make it much stronger. That has to be done before I get on it. I must weigh a ton. Then carefully, tenderly, gently he crept up the trunk to the nest where the little bird slept. Then Horton the elephant smiled. Now that's that. And he sat. And he sat. And he sat. And he sat. And he sat all that day. And he kept the egg warm. And he sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured. And it lightninged. It thundered. It rumbled. This isn't much fun, the poor elephant grumbled. I wish she'd come back, cause I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that that Maisie bird doesn't forget. But Maisie by this time was far beyond reach. Enjoying the sunshine way off in the Palm Beach, and having such fun, such a wonderful rest, decided she'd never go back to the nest. So Horton kept sitting there day after day, and soon it was autumn. The leaves blew away, and then came the winter, the snow and the sleet, and icicles hung from his trunk and his feet. But Horton kept smiling and sitting and said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. So poor Horton sat there the whole winter through, and then came the springtime, with troubles anew. His friends gathered round and they shouted with glee, Look, Horton the elephant's up in a tree. They taunted, they teased him, they yelled, How absurd! Old Horton the elephant thinks he's a bird. They laughed and they laughed. Then they all ran away. And Horton was lonely. He wanted to play. But he sat on the egg and continued to say, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. No matter what happens, 
the egg must be tended, but poor Horton's troubles were far, far from ended. For while Horton sat there, so faithful, so kind, three hunters came sneaking up softly behind. He heard the men's footsteps. He turned with a start. Three rifles were aiming right straight at his heart. Did he run? He did not. Horton stayed on that nest. He held his head high and he threw out his chest and he looked at the hunters as much as to say, shoot if you must, but I won't run away. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. But the men didn't shoot. Much to Horton's surprise, they dropped their three guns and they stared with wide eyes. Look, they all shouted, can such a thing be? An elephant sitting on top of a tree. It's strange, it's amazing, it's wonderful, new. Don't shoot him, we'll catch him. That's just what we'll do. Let's take him alive. Why, he's terribly funny. We'll sell him back to a circus for money. And the first thing he knew, they had built a big wagon with ropes on the front for the pullers to drag on. They dug up his tree and they put it inside, with Horton so sad that he practically cried, We're off! The men shouted, and off they all went, with Horton unhappy 100%. Up out of the jungle, up into the sky, up over the mountains 10,000 feet high, then down, down the mountains and down to the sea, went the cart with the elephant, egg, nest, and tree. Then out of the wagon and onto a ship, out over the ocean, and ooh, what a trip, rolling and tossing and splashed with the spray. And Horton said, day after day after day, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, but oh, am I seasick, 100%. After bobbing around for two weeks like a cork, they landed at last in the town of New York. All ashore, the men shouted, and down with a lurch went Horton the Elephant still on his perch tied on to a board that could just scarcely hold him. Bump! Horton landed. And then the men sold him. Sold to a circus. Then week after week they showed him to people at ten cents a peak. They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Weehawken, and Washington too to Dayton, Ohio, St. Paul, Minnesota, to Wichita, Kansas, to Drake, North Dakota. And everywhere thousands of folks flocked to see and laugh at the elephant up in a tree. Poor Horton grew sadder the farther he went, but he said as he sat in the hot, noisy tent, I bent what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. Then, one day, this circus show happened to reach a town way down south, not so far from Palm Beach. And dwaddling along way up in the sky, who, of all people, should chance to fly by? But that good-for-nothing runaway Maisie, still on vacation and still just as lazy, and spying the flags and the tents just below, she sang out, What fun! Why, I'll go to the show. 
and she swooped from the clouds through an open tent door. Good gracious, gasped Maisie. I've seen you before. Poor Horton looked up with his face white as chalk. He started to speak, but before he could talk, there rang out the noisiest, ear-splitting squeaks from the egg that he'd sat on for 51 weeks. A thumping, a bumping, a wild, alive scratching. My egg, shouted Horton. My egg, why it's hatching. But it's mine, screamed the bird when she heard the egg crack. The work was all done. Now she wanted it back. It's my egg, she sputtered. You stole it from me. Get off my nest and get out of my tree. Poor Horton backed down with a sad, heavy heart. But at that very instant, the egg burst apart. And out of the pieces of red and white shell from the egg that he'd sat on so long and so well, Horton the elephant saw something whiz. It had ears and a tail and a trunk just like his. And the people came shouting, What's all this about? They looked and they stared with their eyes popping out. Then they cheered and they cheered and they cheered more and more. They'd never seen anything like it before. My goodness! My gracious, they shouted, my word. It's something brand new. It's an elephant bird. And it should be. It should be. It should be like that. Because Horton was faithful. He sat and he sat. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. And they sent him home. Happy, 100%. Thanks, Mr. Johnson. All right, well, that wraps up everything for us here today on Education Station. We want to thank everyone who shared their awesome lessons. And we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Education Station.